Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant where I talk about what happened in the tennis world in the previous week. And I haven't done a rant in a while and what's been happening is the domination of Carlos Alcaraz. This guy is the real deal. They are comparing him now to Federer, Nadal and Djokovic when they were at a similar age. And he's just as good as them, if not better. And it's going to be interesting to see how he continues to perform in the coming years that I can tell you that there's not a lot of players that can challenge him on clay. I saw the match against Tsitsipas in Barcelona. I saw the match, for example, against Zverev in Madrid. And there's a big discrepancy in level on clay. I think on hard court, there might be some more guys like Sinner and Rune who can challenge him. But on clay, the only two players, in my opinion, that have a chance of beating Alcaraz are our top form Djokovic and a top form Nadal. In my opinion, those are the only two guys that can give a challenge to Alcaraz. Also, Sabalenka finally beats Iga on clay. I think a little bit of this had to do with the fact that Madrid is played on a higher altitude. It's a little bit faster, which now leads me to transition into the topic of today's rant, which is the fact that old school tennis still works. Now, if you remember one of my previous rants where I talked about Nick Kyrgios' statement where he was asked how players from the past, for example, Pete Sampras, would do against today's players, and Kyrgios said that they would get destroyed. And I disagree with that statement because I do believe that power player like Sampras or Becker, who's also a servant volleyer and comes in off the return very frequently, is a tough style to play against. I don't care what era you're playing in. And Jan Lennart Struff proved it yesterday. He played old school tennis, which led to Alcaraz playing one of the worst matches he's played on clay in this season. And for you guys that didn't watch the match, I highly recommend that you watch this one because it was a different type of match, one that you don't see too often because Struff started the match serving and he served in Bali every single point and he lost every single point he got broken to love and I thought uh oh this might be like a two and one score and then on the second game where Alcaraz was serving Alcaraz won the first point and then on the second return point Struff hit a James Blake type return winner what's a James Blake return winner well it's one where you hit a winner through the middle of the court he hit that forehand return so hard off a of first serve that he hit a winner right next to Alcaraz's foot and I thought okay this guy is coming out here with a different game plan. And then he continued to come in off a lot of returns and he pretty much served and volleyed first and second serve on the vast majority of the points. In fact, he came to the net 52 times. Now his execution wasn't Pete Sampras or Boris Becker style. He only won 63% of his points at the net, but he came in a lot. And let me tell you, it was an excellent strategy because it didn't give Alcaraz any rhythm. See, in theory, you would think that today's players, especially players at the GOAT level, like Nadal, Djokovic, Alcaraz, if you come in against them, they're so strong off the baseline that you're not going to have a chance. They're going to pass you on every point. So the players that I just mentioned, and Nadal confirmed this, they like getting into a rhythm. They actually like long rallies. So what happens when there are no long rallies, there is a chance, now this is not a guarantee by any means, but there's a chance that they might lose their rhythm and that they start making uncharacteristic mistakes. And that's exactly what happened to Alcaraz in yesterday's final. He made a lot more mistakes than he usually does for the simple fact that Struff was not giving him any rhythm whatsoever. Now Alcaraz did get into a little better rhythm in the third set and he started playing well, but Struff could have won this match in straight sets. He had chances to win that first set and he obviously won the second set. So there was a realistic chance for Struff to win this match old school style by serving volleying off of second serves against Alcaraz. Okay, I understand it's Madrid, it's altitude. It's probably going to be tougher to do at the French Open. But remember back in the day, there were serving volleyers who did really well at the French Open. For example, Stefan Edberg making it to the final, John Macaron making it to the final, Boris Becker and Pete Sampras making it to the semifinal. So is serving volley dead? Yes, it is because there's almost no one that executes this tactic anymore. Maxime Cressy is ranked 40 in the world. He's a serving volleyer. 
And Struff, not necessarily a servant Baalier, but he knows how to do it and he did it in this tournament with great success. And he made the final of a Masters and has a career high ranking now of 26 in the world. And to me, this is proof that old school tennis still works in the right context. I do agree with Kyrgios in a way where if McEnroe would serve and volley off of serves that are not as powerful, it's gonna to be tough to win matches against the power players in today's game. But a power player like a Sampras, like a Becker, or like a Struff who is built like a Becker, quite frankly. He's 6'4", he's a big guy, hit, can hit the ball extremely strong. Why wouldn't that game style work? Think about it. When you have a strong guy like that coming at you non-stop and attacking you, of course it's gonna be a tough style to play against. So when you face someone who constantly attacks you, you might lose your rhythm because you don't have the luxury of getting into long rallies and building the point. But there's another thing. From a mental standpoint, it is very challenging to play someone who's constantly attacking you and coming in because let's face it what happens when someone comes to the net the point is going to be over very quickly you are being put to the test you got to come up with a lob passing shot a little dink shot to the feet and you don't have that luxury to build the point and safely get that ball into the court so from a mental standpoint there's a lot of pressure when you face players who constantly attack serving and volleying coming in off your return is something that can work at any level of the game whether you're a junior player or a recreational player whether you're a lower high level player trying to make it through the future circuit or even at the elite level the guys that we watch on tv serving and volleying and coming in off return works old school tennis still works serve and volley is not dead but here's the important thing you have to practice this if you don't practice volleying in general at the recreational level for example and of course you shouldn't come in you need to possess proper volley technique i'm going to feature a lot more videos on the intuitive tennis youtube channel down the road where i'll teach you guys how to correctly volley but it's not all about volleying the art of serving and volleying and coming in off returns is something that's completely different to putting a volley away when you come in off an approach shot so this is something that has to be practiced this is something that only then will be utilized in a real match situation because here's the deal. You're not gonna have the courage to serve in volley and come in off your returns if you don't possess proper volley technique.